The eastern city of Severodonetsk is now completely cut off from the rest of the country after all three bridges were destroyed by Russian forces. Heavy fighting has been taking place there for weeks. Thousands of civilians and Ukrainian troops are now trapped in the city with no way of delivering aid and supplies. Russia is also bombarding the neighboring city of Lysychansk, from which civilians are still trying to flee. Our international correspondent Ola Gerin with video journalist Colm Amoloy sent this report from the Donbass. Plus. Max speed. We're told to drive at maximum speed on the exposed road to Lysychansk. A dark horizon greets us. Residents praying for salvation as Russia lays waste. Ukrainian troops call for help to take away one more victim of Russian shelling. Nearby, the rush to evacuate civilians who have to duck for cover. A panicked departure in an armoured truck. Well, people are taking this chance to get out while they can, but they know this could be a one-way journey. If the Russians take this territory, and they're getting closer all the time, these people may never be able to come back to their city and their homes. The situation is critical, a rescue worker says. Can't you hear the shelling? So another city empties out, here in eastern Ukraine. A few more wait anxiously for their turn, hoping to outrun moving front lines. Volodymyr is among them. He's sick and headed to hospital. He tells me that life here was calm until the war broke everything apart. And it has left its terrible mark. This was the Palace of Culture, now standing as grim testament to Moscow's superior firepower. Ukraine's president says Lysychansk is already dead, along with neighboring Severodonetsk, ghost cities now. Well, this is an example of the kind of devastation that Russia has brought. It's not just destroying apartment buildings and flats and homes. It's destroying history and the fabric of cities. And this is a deliberate tactic, bomb, shell, burn, and leave nothing but scorched earth. Those who remain make brief escapes from their basements to cook outdoors. The city has no power or running water. But Yelena still clings to her home, despite the growing threat. Do you think the Russians will take the city soon? It seems like they're getting close. I don't know, she says. We're hoping it'll be okay. But the city is running out of time. This is now an artillery war. Ukraine doesn't have enough big guns or ammunition. At the 11th hour, another plea for help. My message and message all Ukrainian people, I think we need victory, we need peace, and uh, we cannot uh, get a peace and a victory without help our partners, uh, because without uh, equipment for our artillery, I think uh, we cannot uh, get a victory in this uh, terrible war. As we spoke, the war came closer. But, but. That was a Russian shell whistling over our heads. Just a short distance away, neighboring Severodonetsk is burning and may soon fall. Inside the city, the last pockets of resistance.
Ukrainian troops fight building to building and street to street. But all bridges to the city have now been destroyed. Ukraine is facing an enemy that has learned lessons and is imposing crushing losses in battle. Troops fight on, but the handful of advanced weapon systems promised by Britain and the US may be too little, too late. Here in the Donbass region right now, it looks like a losing battle. Orligiran, BBC News, Eastern Ukraine. Our correspondent Joe Inwood is in Kiev this morning. Joe, looks like relative calm there, but we've seen in Orla's report the fierce fighting in Lysychansk in Severodonetsk. Is that the front line now for this war, these two cities? Yeah, absolutely. That's where the Russians are focusing all of their attentions. They have been for weeks now, and they've been pushing the Ukrainians back further and further into a smaller pocket. We think that the Ukrainian forces are now concentrated around the industrial area. They've been pushed out of the city centre. And they've also now, the Russians have destroyed the last of the bridges across the Seversky Donetsk River, the bridges that would connect the soldiers and the people of Severodonetsk to Lysychansk and the rest of the Donbass. That means, therefore, that they're not going to be able to get out and more supplies aren't going to be able to get in. So it looks like Severodonetsk is closing in on some sort of siege. So no supplies getting in. We've been hearing that this is now an artillery war. So that's essential, isn't it, getting supplies in. Just how long can Ukrainian forces uh, continue to hold off the Russians? It's really difficult to know, actually. The Ukrainians don't give us detailed information on that sort of thing for, for operational reasons, obviously. In terms of, I mean, it is worth pointing out, actually, that in terms of the artillery battle, well, you don't actually need to be right in the city. So the Ukrainians are cut off from more supplies of food, of water, of ammunition. But if they can get artillery into Lysychansk, well, they can still take part in the fight for Severodonetsk. The cities are that close that you don't need to be right on the front lines. So all is not lost for the defence of Severodonetsk, but it is going to be very difficult. I think the problem, though, is not getting artillery to the front. The issue is getting artillery from the West. So there have been huge promises of supplies. There's been promises of these multiple launch rocket systems, more advanced systems that could really turn the tide. But they're not getting here fast enough. And this is a point that the Ukrainians have been making time and again. They need this help, but they don't need it in months. They need it now. Okay, that's useful insight. Joe Inwood, thank you very much. Joe is in Kiev.